Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. On behalf of the University of Strathclyde, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you to the Barony Hall for this congregation for the conferment of degrees. Today is a very special day in the university calendar. It's a graduation day, which means it's a day of celebration, not just for our graduates, for their families and their friends, but indeed for all of the staff of the university. And I can't think of a better venue in which to hold this celebration than here in the Barney. Now, in the United States, they refer to these events as commencement ceremonies, as they look upon graduation as the start of a new journey. It's in this spirit that we also celebrate graduations at the University of Strathclyde. Now, in a few moments, it will be my privilege to cap each of our graduates as their name is called out and they come on stage to receive their awards. The capping tradition is recognised as a rite of passage and as a mark of achievement. And for each of our graduates, once capped, this signifies that they are part of a community of scholars at the University of Strathclyde that can stretch back over 200 years to the Scottish Enlightenment. So they'll be in very good company. At the close of graduation, we have a reception in our nearby Lord Todd building to which everyone is invited to come along and to celebrate. We also hope to have an academic procession from the Barney to the Lord Todd, and that will depend upon the weather, and I'll get an update on that later on in the proceedings. In the meantime, I do hope that you enjoy the ceremony, and when you see your loved ones come on stage to receive their awards, please feel free to celebrate. These occasions do not come round very often, so make the most of it. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is open, and I invite Professor David Hillier, Vice Dean of Strathclyde's Business School, to present our graduates to receive their awards. Thank you. Vice Principal, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for research in the Department of Accounting and Finance, Norfaiza Binti Sawandi. For research in the Department of Economics, Fraser William Knox. <laughs> Marie Tamba. For the degree of Master of Science in Finance, Nida Iqbal Ahmed. <laughs> Ralitsa Atanasova. Bai Han. <laughs> Eva Bielsa Campos. <laughs> Yi Xuan Chang. Arifo Ak Chaudhry. <laughs> Lars Gerlo Listad. <laughs> Ma
Mohammed Daniel bin Ayruden. Wan Jan Shu. Cha Chen Huang. Zacharias Itzinas. Devanch Jaitha. Matthew Paul Kimaro. Vipul Kothari. Nitifand Lueng Thong Di. Gaspar Maria Kalem Maliero Ramau. <laughs> Catherine Matthias Mlela. <laughs> Santosh Nase Gauda. Ruth Naylor. <laughs> Ngoin Vai Bao Yen. <laughs> Morton Monrad Nielsen. John Latit Ni Um Bundit Rose Elias Otaigo Joshua Saunders Vinit Rajesh Sedani. <laughs> Yuki Shibuya. <laughs> Socrates Stamacho. Monica Vira Badrapa. <laughs> Malcolm Wallbank. <laughs> In international accounting and finance, Jules Blanc. Martin Borgman. <laughs> Nikolaus Diplas. <laughs> Mohammed Saad Ibrahim El Magub. Aurelia Goody. <laughs> Thomas Pierre Lupez.
Kaliorgis Evangelos. Christos Camperis. Nikhil Ram Kunchikorvi. Dimitrios Sakaris. Umiotsi Ayamedzum Bridget. In international banking and finance, Damien Mark Dunn. Roberto Lore. Jonathan William Shan. Monica Jail Mellicent Stanley. Hamish Wilson. In investment in finance, Kenneth Kwame Asante. Chachlaki Agiro. Scott Dixon. Peter Martin Engert. Carly Catherine Ferguson. Aurang Zaib Umayun. Eleftherios Colias. Kwe Wern Jin. Banu Pratap Singh Lao. <laughs> Meng Ji Lu. <laughs> Aglaya Nauka. Leonora Emefa Okudzetu. <laughs> Dimitrius Saramurtsis. <laughs> Hasina Binti Yop. In economic management and policy with business economics, Thomas Charles Carr. In economic management and policy with environmental economics, David Egan. In Applied Economics, Colin Adam. Jack Cosley.
James Gerard Coulter. <laughs> Ian Patrick Lindsay Henderson. <laughs> Sack Depat Meet Pagdi. Stuart John Newman. <laughs> Alexander Grant Williams. <laughs> In global energy management, Carmen Diaz Serrano. Silvia Luisa Escudero Santos Ascalza. <laughs> Timo Crisson. <laughs> Marco Serpelloni. Johannes George Wetzel. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, and most of all, Strathclyde University's newest graduates, it's my pleasure to once again warmly welcome you to our graduation ceremony here in the Barney Hall. Quite rightly, our graduates have been centre stage, and I'd like to begin my address by congratulating all of you once again on your academic achievements. Your hard work has paid off, and this has now been recognised in front of your families, friends, and the staff who taught and supported you during your time at the university. As I mentioned earlier, graduation is one of the great moments in the university calendar. This is a proud day for you, for your families and friends, and for all of us. Well done indeed. <laughs> now in a short while, at the close of graduation, you may be asked to join the academic procession as this leaves the Barney Hall, provided that the rain stays off. This invitation symbolises the fact that you are no longer students, but now full members of the academic community of Strathclyde, a community that now numbers over 170,000 individuals. This is an important day for you all, and I hope that the memory of today is something that will stay with you wherever you go and whatever you choose to do in life. We will keep in touch with you through our alumni team and I would ask that you also keep in touch with us. Let us know what you're up to, what you think about what we're doing at the university and what you would like to do to help future generations of students. As Strathclyde graduates, you possess one of the most valuable assets anyone can have in today's world. A capacity to absorb knowledge together with the ability to use this for the benefit of your community and the wider world. Nelson Mandela once said that education 
it was the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. Do not underestimate this power or your responsibility to use it well. In Scotland, we are fortunate in having a higher education system which is internationally respected and as a society, we are quite right to invest in this. However, education itself does not confer rights. The opportunities that education gives each of us also carries with it a responsibility to use what we have learned wisely and for the good of others. A sense of duty should come readily to graduates of this university. As Strathclyders, we only have to look back at the achievements of those who have gone before for inspiration. To John Anderson, our founder, who established this university for the good of mankind. To the world's first oil man, James Parapin Young. To the missionary and explorer, David Livingston. To John Logie Baird, who did so much for the development of television. In the present day, we look to Dame Ailish Angelini, a pioneer in Scottish justice as the country's first female Solicitor General and later its first female Lord Advocate. And to Sir Tom Hunter, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Scottish history and a philanthropist who has used his wealth to the great benefit of others around the world. There is a saying that we're all paid in two types of banknote. One is cash and the other is experience. Always take the experience as the money will come later. Robert Louis Stevenson put it well when he said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. Now to reach this point in your lives today, each of you will have had a different journey. For some, the path will have been relatively smooth. For others, this may have been more challenging. However, I am certain of one thing, that none of you would be here without the active support of your family and friends. They have picked you up when you have been down, they have encouraged you when you have needed it, and they've even been willing to take in your dirty laundry. Now they are celebrating today, not just because you're almost off the payroll, but because you carry with you their hopes, their wishes, and confidence for a successful career. For the last half hour or so, their applause has rung in your ears as you each in turn cross the stage to receive your awards. I would now like to invite our graduates to show their appreciation for the support they have received for their family and friends. I touched earlier on some of the key figures who have helped create and shape the University of Strathclyde. And you can tell a lot about the values of an organization by looking at its roots. Strathclyde traces its lineage back to 1796, when Anderson brought it into being, the only Scottish university founded during the Age of Enlightenment and embodying the Enlightenment principles of reason, tolerance, and equality. While our roots go back over 200 years, it's also important to note that this year, 2014, we are marking our 50th anniversary of being granted our Royal Charter from Queen Elizabeth II. Anderson's belief in useful learning and his commitment to taking knowledge and using this for the greater good is the motivating force which gives Strathclyde University its momentum today. Indeed, it was our demonstration of this very commitment which helped Strathclyde to win the UK title of the Times Higher Entrepreneurial University of the Year last November and the Times Higher University of the Year in the previous year. We are the first Scottish university to have won this prestigious UK title. The judges called our university bold, innovative and imaginative, attributes which you, our latest graduates, will embody. This can also be seen in the Hunter Centre for, for Entrepreneurship and in the Fraser of Allender Institute, which are both contributing directly to the development of the Scottish economy. Other faculty highlights over the last year include Strathclyde's MBM being placed 43 in the Financial Times ranking of the world's top 70 
free experience general management programmes. Professor Tim Bedford of Management Science received the Geopolitical and Societal Category Prize and the Lloyd's Science of Risk Awards. Strathclyde was ranked in the top 10 in Europe in the QS Distance Online MBA rankings. Students, Chitra Sharma and Louise Shena, both marketing, won the first prize in the Scottish Institute for Enterprises New Ventures competition. Jamie Cooper Higgins, marketing, was a Scottish winner in the National Target Jobs Undergraduate of the Year Awards. Anup Karath Nair, Strategy and Organisation, and Igor Pirko, Management Science, represented the UK in the finals of the annual Tata Crucible Campus Quiz. And earlier this year, Professor Eleanor Shaw, head of the Hunter Centre for Entrepreneurship, travelled to Downing Street to receive the Small Business Charter Award in recognition of Strathclyde Business School's support for small businesses and start-up companies. Now, these are just some of the many contributions and achievements being made by our staff and our students across Strathclyde Business School. And Strathclyde is being increasingly recognised as a place where things happen, and this is why our graduates are so highly prized by companies and organisations looking to recruit the best talent to drive their businesses forward. However, regardless of their discipline, all of our students learn how to be innovative, enterprising and creative, and they make a real difference when they go out into the workplace. So wherever your career takes you, always remember that as a Strathclyde graduate, useful learning carries with it responsibilities that go beyond academic scholarship. And finally, let me offer my sincerest congratulations to you all once again on your achievements, and I hope that you enjoy the remainder of what is a very special day. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that now concludes the formal part of today's proceedings, and I hope you enjoyed the ceremony. Uh, I would remind you that we do have a reception in the nearby Lord Todd building, and everyone is invited to come along and help us celebrate graduation. I'm now looking at the back of the hall, and I'm getting that well-known weather signal of a thumbs up, which means that the rain has stayed off, and we will be able to have an academic procession from the Barney to the Lord Todd and I'll invite our newest graduates to join that academic procession. And if I could ask, ladies and gentlemen, if you could remain seated until the academic procession has passed. I now formally declare this congregation for the conferment of degrees closed. <laughs>